Hello my darlings and welcome to this new video. I wanted to talk about something today that has been quite pressing on me over the last few days stroke week involving the Sarah Everard case. Um, more importantly the comments that I have read, heard about, watched in videos regarding what's going on with that situation. The overall consensus of what's been happening is that more needs to be done to protect people, especially women, in society against attacks, murder, rape, sexual assault and so forth. And I want to put it out there, I 100 million percent agree. I think I would be pretty unhealthy if I didn't see that as being a positive thing to do. I also want to state um, very quickly, because this is not the point of the video, that individuals who are not pathological, and I'll come on to those in a second, so not pathologically disordered, should I say, um, those who are misogynistic, who believe that they are above women, who believe that they can treat women in which way they want, those who believe they can attack, they can rape, they can assault, they can follow, they can stalk, they can catcall, um, they can do what they like basically. So these misogynistic individuals, as misogynistic males, um, wholeheartedly need to sort themselves out. Wholeheartedly. There is absolutely no excuse for their behaviour. And I'm not, I am not trying to give them an excuse. There is no excuse. They need to sort themselves out. I just want to point that out very quickly because that's not the point of the video today. I want to talk about the problem that I've come up against and have realised is a severe problem in society. And I might be using the same sort of quotes as I did in my one of my last videos, but I'm going to use them again to highlight the point. In the UK, £5.5 billion pounds was spent in 2019 on the aftermath of abusive relationships, whether that's like custodial, um, costs, whether that's cost of people not being able to go back to work because of mental health, medications, therapies, uh, custody, that's their custody battles, finding housing, um, murder, death, um, 5.5 billion in the UK. So those of us who work, our taxes in part go on supporting the aftermath of these abusive relationships. And when I hear comments such as more needs to be done, I'm in an opposing place. On the one hand, I'm like, of course, yeah, more needs to be done. On the other hand, I'm like, can more be done um, in certain elements? Of course, more can be done, but in certain elements. What I want to just briefly go over in today's video is something I'll be talking about a lot in more depth and more scientific de depth is the idea of certain disordered personalities. So in today's video I want to talk about individuals who have narcissistic personality disorder, antisocial personality disorder and although not a recognised diagnostic trait many professionals agree that there is something called psychopathy. Um, when I talk about antisocial personality disorder, usually the street name that people often give those individuals who would have that disorder is sociopath. So I'm going to say narcissist, sociopath and psychopath, but sociopath is not a diagnostic term. And at the moment, as it stands, psychopath, I don't believe is a di diagnostic term. It's just recognised as being a different branch out of those two personality disorders. Now, first of all, before I start, the majority of people with these disorders don't have recognised diagnostics at all. They're not recordly diagnosed as being, an, um, being narcissistic, sociopathic or psychopathic. Why? Because the very nature of these disorders means that these individuals don't believe that their behaviour is in any way wrong. They don't believe that their actions are abusive. They don't feel there is anything wrong in the way they conduct themselves, even when they... Um, possibly murder somebody they will justify their reason for that oh that person pissed me off you know oh that person was this that, whatever it may be they justify everything they do um and if they don't justify what they do 
they just think it's their God-given right to do what they like. It's part of their personality disorder, right? So when I talk about these individuals, what I'm saying is the majority of people with these disorders will never get the recognised diagnostic. Why would you go to a doctor um, or a therapist if you didn't feel you had anything wrong with you? Why? I'm going to go to therapy just for the fun of it. You wouldn't do so. And so these individuals I'm talking about will not, for the most part, have any recognised diagnostic um, diagnosis under their, their name, the very nature of it. But from my experience with a psychopath, I want to make it known that there is such little education on these disorders, which is one of the big first problems. So before my experience, I didn't know anything about these individuals. Why would I have an interest in learning about personality disorders? In my mind, I would never meet one. I didn't know any. Why would it bother me? So I'm in the same bracket as a lot of people where I didn't have any education. I was uneducated in that because I didn't feel it was really something I needed to know. And a lot of you watching this video may feel the same thing. And why would I want to, why would I want to learn about this? Like, I don't know anyone. The likelihood is you do. Um, according to statistics, one in a hundred people are considered to be psychopathic. Um, and that's just... I honestly, to be honest, I don't know where that judgment came from and how it came from it. I can post a study in the comment below or the study, the link, the actual verified study. And that's just psychopaths. Those who have narcissistic personality disorder, those who have um, antisocial personality disorder. I don't know statistics for that, but that's terrifying. A one in a hundred. It is likely in your lifetime that you have met many psychopaths. It is likely that you possibly have one in your life right now. And before you try and scan all of your friends and family and go, hmm, I wonder which one it is. Like the likelihood is you'll never know unless they want you to know or unless you suddenly come up against something you're like, whoa, that was a bit weird. It's unlikely you're going to know. And this is the main problem with society. And it's not individual's fault. It's just the way society are as a whole. Let me pose a question to you and be honest with you, honest with yourself. When I say to you psychopath, what do you think of? Now, a high percentage of people will think of one of two things. They'll either think of somebody like Ted Bundy or Charles Manson, Charles Bronson, or any of the um, famous murderers, serial rapists, serial killers that they've heard read about, watched documentaries on, being fascinated by these, like, oh, these interesting criminals, like what goes on in their mind? You'll either be on in that bracket or you'll be in the bracket of Freddy versus Jason running down the road with a mask on and a chainsaw stabbing you or one of the many horror movie villains that you've watched in the last month, year, lifetime, etc. One of the problems this causes and there's nothing wrong, by the way, I'm not shaming anyone for watching documentaries on, on crimes and so forth. But the problems we have is as a society, we are desensitised to what actually is a psychopath. Did you realise over 60% of psychopaths, and I'm just going to go with a psychopath for now rather than keep mentioning the personality disorders, but they're all dangerous. Six, over 60% of psychopaths are living amongst us. And they don't wield chainsaws and they don't take knives and go stab, stab, stab. OK, they appear to be fully functioning because they are fully functioning, you know, intellectually and cognitively. Um, in society, you would not know that they're a psychopath. They haven't got a stamp on their head. You know, they haven't got a barcode branded into their arm from the 10 people they killed. They don't walk around with a chainsaw in their backpack. But society unconsciously has been programmed to feel psychopaths are the serial killers in the programs they're watching or they're all locked up incarcerated behind bars and they had the crazy look in their eyes which would have given it away had you met that person before they were incarcerated oh, I just need to move them. and that's just simply not true the majority of psychopaths and narcissists and sociopaths are living amongst us and they're not criminal psychopaths. I mean, they're criminal as in they abuse and they break the law that way, but they're not criminal as in they attack, they rape, they murder and so forth. 
So that's the first point. It's the fact that we are, without thinking about it, it sounds ridiculous. But without thinking about it, when people think of psychopaths, they're like, I would know a psychopath if he walked down the street from me because he would have a crazed look in his eye. I would just know there'd be something about him. Actually, no. This is the next point I want to get onto. And when I say he, by the way, there are female psychopaths, there are female narcissists, there are female sociopaths. But the high percentage, I think it's something like it's in the 70s, 70 something percent of these personality disordered individuals are males. And there's a lot of science and a lot of um, culture, 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 culturally, culture reasons, <laughs> and cultural explanations. That's what I meant about that. And that will come in later videos. Right. But they're female or male. But I think, first of all, as a collective, we imagine and envisage these people being in prison already safe behind bars or they're the ones on the TV we watched and so forth. Second reason or second problem we have is because we are so focused on the fascinating life of like a serial killer, we actually take all of the um, emphasis off of people who have actually been victimised by these people. There is not enough in place to understand people who have been, such as myself, who've been through the abuse of a psychopath and the outcome of that and how it impacts you and so forth. And because of that, first of all, it makes victims or survivors isolated. But second of all, we are, and I'm, I'm quoting Sandra Brown here, by the way, I'm going to quote Sandra Brown a lot. I really look up to her. She's had like 25 years in the field of pathology. She knows a lot and I really wholeheartedly agree with a lot of what she has to say in her understanding. Um, but we are, we have the keys to understanding these individuals. We know what makes them tick. We notice things uh, when we look back, maybe not at the time, but when we look back, we notice things that we could have seen. Oh, that was a red flag and this and this, but we're ignored. Like society doesn't, um, put emphasis on understanding pathologically disordered people through the experience of those who've been pathologically disorderly abused by these people. Instead, they put all the onus on the fascination of these disorders or romanticise them. So that's a big problem. Now, let's go into a little bit of science. I'm not going to go too deep into science because I don't want this video to be too long. But into the science of these individuals, first of all, is they are resistant to change. The very nature of their pervasive personality, pervasive meaning permanent, means they are resistant to change. First of all, if you want to change something about yourself, you have to be willing to change it. No one else can change you aside from yourself, right? These individuals don't feel there's anything wrong. They get what they want out of life, you know? They abuse somebody until the point where they're not useful anymore and then they find somebody else and they're fine. They get what they like out of life. But second of all, as of March 2021, where we are right now, there has been no evidence that anything has helped to eradicate, reduce, educate the behaviour of these individuals. No medication, no amount of therapy helps these indiv individuals to change their pervasive personalities. Therefore, as a society, what do we do? How do you, I mean, let's go back to the original non-pathological men in the beginning. If they're resistant to change, it's because they're arrogant, it's because it's going to be difficult work, it's because they get some benefit out of, you know, um, being abusive or whatever it is towards women. But they can change. It's not something in their brains, not various aspects of their brains having shrunken and bigger and working in a different way. The deficits that pathologically disordered individuals have. Therefore, they're resistant to change because they just basically are fighting against their own ego. But they can change. They could go to therapy. They could have medication if need be. Whatever it may be, they can change. So they can be dealt with. Personality disordered individuals who in all fairness are possibly as if not more dangerous. They are dangerous people. Let me just put that out there. They are dangerous people. Cannot change. Not through want, not through medication, not through therapy. Zero has worked in improving pathologically disordered individuals' personalities on any level. 
How do you change somebody like that? Add to that point that they are also pathological liars. So even if you were like, that's it, we're going to bring everybody in. Everyone has to do a questionnaire. We're going to figure out who the psychopaths are. And then they're going to have something branded onto their heads. I'm not saying I agree with all this, by the way, but something branded onto their heads so that we know they're psychopaths so that we can avoid them. They are pathological lawyer, law, lawyers, <laughs> might as well be. They are pathological liars as part of their pervasive personality. They will lie in order to make sure that the situation they're in benefits them. Therefore, you're not going to find out they're a psychopath. Even people who've worked in the field of studying them for 20, 30 years have been fooled by these individuals. You cannot play a psychopath. You cannot play them. So how are you supposed to help them? How are you supposed to make society safe for people that can't change? There's no science that helps them at the moment. Um, as I said, one in a hundred people in the world is a psychopath. This is not like a small problem. This is not like, oh, you know, there might be one psychopath in the UK. So as long as we avoid them, it's unlikely we're gonna come across them. It's likely when you walk down the high street, pre-COVID, <laughs> post-covid um and you're surrounded by a bunch of people you probably pass multiple psychopaths in your day and that for me is a lot of people and that's not taking into consideration the sociopaths it's not taking into consideration the narcissists who are both again resistant to change through any form of therapy through any form of medication right it's it's likely every single day you come across one of them and for the most part they're not going to be outwardly aggressive towards you. Um, they might even come across as really lovely because that's part of their persona. They do come across as really lovely. They like to create that false sense of safety. Um, just for example, another problem with these individuals is if you're walking down the street as a woman late at night and there was a couple of men being a bit leery and then you suddenly had this man like, hey, stop it, like, and actually attacked the other guys and said, leave her alone. Like, I'm really sorry, love. You can carry on. Da -da -da and built that false sense of safety with that individual, that person who's developed that false sense of safety could very well be the psychopath who then later goes around the block and not saying they do or would, but that's another possibility because they come across and they develop that false sense of safety. So therefore, I don't know what you're expecting for society to be able to do about these individuals. They're not gonna walk down the road with a crazed look in their eye. They're not going to walk down the road wielding a chainsaw or a knife and with the words psychopath branded across their heads. Then pervasive personality means their resistance to change. And as society as a whole do not have the education anyway, not through the fault of their own, through the way society has evolved, means that we are just, you know, even going back to the education thing, I'm going to quote Sandra Brown here again, is how can... You expect a victim to prepare or prepare themselves um, or no, help themselves, prevent themselves. I'm not doing this quote very well, am I? Prevent themselves from being abused when they don't even have the education behind them to understand what it is that they're up against anyway. Like, how can you prepare yourself to protect yourself from psychopaths when you don't have an understanding of what a psychopath is truly and what might? happen in a in a, a conversation with one in a relationship with one and walking down the street with one like how can you prepare yourself for that when you don't have that level of education and that comes back to society not putting an emphasis on it um another point i want to make very clear is that society as a whole the way we function is that we end up investing our time and our money into preventative um into dealing with something after it's already happened as opposed to preventative measures so just going on my experience i had no education on what a psychopath was i had where i went to the doctors during my abusive relationship and was told that i was depressed and then put on antidepressants which i wasn't because the anti antidepressants didn't work and actually what it was was i was being abused um, and I was emotionally dysregulated and all this stuff, which will come in other videos. But the doctors straight away, you're depressed. Here goes some antidepressants. 
So I end up having to experience all of that, come out the other end, almost lose my life, lose my career, um, go through all of what I've gone through. And that is where, when you come out the other side, where um, society try to put the money, they try to put the money in the rehabilitation, the therapy, and they try to patholo pathologize the victims and, you know, let's put all the money and stuff into helping them, which is great, don't get me wrong, of course. Yes, put the emphasis into them, but nothing is ever done as a preventative tool. And it's the same now with society, people going, people need to change. We need to be protected more. But society as a whole is going on the whole, um, it's not, is now going on the how to prevent, um, not how to prevent, how to deal with the aftermath of somebody being raped and abused, um, as opposed to what needs to be done to stop somebody being raped and abused by the rape and abuser. Does that make any sense? So I think the society, we have it the wrong way around. We're working on when something has happened, how can we then support that person through what they've been through as opposed to let's fucking stop this from happening in the first place. And again, unfortunately, the lack of education, as well as the pervasive nature of these people, makes it incredibly difficult to do so. Um, I'm just looking in the background because I did write a few um, things down. Yes. The last bit of science I want to talk about, about these personality disorders and why it's incredibly difficult um, to put any preventative um, measure measurements in place. And I'm not trying to be dismissive, by the way, like maybe somebody out there has an answer and I really hope they do. Some of the nature of these personality disorders, and I'll talk about this more in future videos, is that part of their brain, again, I'll go into more specific detail later, but part of their brain, the deficits in their brain, means that they are both impulsive and they lack fear, as in healthy human fear. Impulsivity means they will do, as the, as the word suggests, they will do and say things like that, because in that moment, that's what they feel like doing and that's what they feel their benefit from in doing that. How, therefore, even if, for example, say, for example, a non-pathological man catcalls, makes women uncomfortable, follows women down the street, gets shitty when the woman won't give him his num give her give him her number. That behaviour can be dealt with. That person can understand their conditionings, can change their things, and that's a preventative measure. So that person no longer poses a threat to that woman walking down the street. A psychopath first of all, can't get any treatment, nothing will change their behaviour, but second of all, also acts on impulse. So they could be walking down the street, and I know it might seem really extreme to some, can quite literally go, oh, that person, I'm going to kill them, and we'll do it. Or I'm just going to go and bloody stab that person, or I'm going to go and rape that person, and they will just do it. There is an impulsivity there that if they feel in that moment in time something's going to benefit them, they will do it. It's not premeditated. They will do it. Um, how are you supposed to prevent that? Because you can't change their urges and you cannot, they're resistant to change in therapy or medication because of the deficits in their brain. Therefore, you can't prevent that from happening. And then with a the level of fear. They do not have the same healthy level of fear as humans do, which is why they are, they um, their partners often experience a lot of infidelity um, and a lot of abusive behaviour because they do it without realising the repercussions. Hang on a second, if I do that, I'm going to really upset my partner, which might need to do that. They're not thinking like that. They don't have that level of fear to think that if I do something, these are the consequences. And this is not something you can train or teach them either. So if they've got no fear of consequences... And they act on impulse at times or quite a lot of the time. How are you going to put preventative measures in place to protect society from these individuals? Um, so this is my video, possibly a bit of a rambling. I don't want to be negative, but I just want to put it out there and highlight to a lot of people who are perhaps in that same bracket of like, more needs to be done to change. To recognise that non-pathologically disordered people can be changed, need to be changed, misogyny needs to be eradicated. But when it comes to pathologically disordered individuals, of which there are many, far more than you realise, far um, far more hidden than you realise, they're not so um, overt, like they don't walk down the road with some very 
clear signal that they are what they are, who also act on impulse, who don't have that level of healthy fear that stops them from doing things that could cause a lot of severe harm to another person. As well as the whole of society being uneducated to a level that they're not able to even put things in place to protect themselves. I'm not just talking women, I'm talking in general. Where do we go from here? And I really hope as a positive to end this video that people start to recognise these things and start to realise at least at the, the very least to educate themselves enough to recognise these people. So even if they're not able to protect themselves per se from a sudden burst attack down the street um, from pathologically disordered people, if they were able to at least recognise what this may look like and their behaviours may look like in relationships, friendships, family circles and so forth and how it affects people and, and like I said, what red flags can you spot to get yourself out of situations that could be detrimental to your health and well-being? At the very least, to do that um, would be an amazing first step for everybody to do. And that's why I hope with the videos that I post online, I promise you they won't always be this rambly and they will be based on a lot more scientific facts that I understand. Um, that I hope that we can start moving towards putting in preventative steps where we can rather than wait for something to happen before people start to react and respond to things. Um, but also to recognise that there is a certain level that at the moment in time, as science stands, as our human understanding is, there are certain things we can't prevent. Um, and that may sound like, oh, a really negative, Jen, but I just want to put it out there to recognise that we can't do anything about these individuals. Um, all we can do is educate ourselves so that if we end up having a long-term relationship or friendship with somebody, we can protect ourselves. But to recognise it's not as easy, you know, you know, everyone's on the sidelines saying more needs to be done, but the people on the sideline as a collective, not saying individuals, but as a collective, are so uneducated about the sorts of predators we are dealing with and I will use that word and I'll explain why in more detail in future videos but um yeah I don't know I'm hoping that this situation brings some sort of expansiveness to people as a collective to realize that as a society we are quite blinded to the individuals we have within our society and we're quite as a collective quite ignorant until it happens to us. And I, I hold my hand up and say, there's a level of ignorance that I held before I went through what I went through. And if I can prevent anybody from going through what I went through, I'm gonna do it. So yeah, let me know your thoughts. This is an interesting one for me at least. And I hope that I sort of gave a new perspective. I hope that maybe I incentivized, incentivized somebody or someone to at least do a little bit more digging, have a little bit more understanding. Um, there are a couple of, I'm not going to name names, but there are a couple of very high profile cases um, going on at the moment in the world of celebrity, which I really don't get involved in. But two very high profile cases with two ex-partners who are going through battles and court cases with abuse and from my perspective now as somebody who has a what I consider to be quite a deep understanding of pathologically disordered people I now listening to the actions of these individuals have been able to go well that one's a psychopath and that one's clearly a sociopath and able to recognize their patterns of behavior and almost chuckle and not it's not a laughing matter, but almost chuckle and go, yep, I bet he said that as well. And I bet he did that because I'm much more aware of these people's behaviours because there is a pervasive pattern that they often follow. And once you know that pattern, you can watch out for it and you're more aware of it. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I shall stop talking now. And uh, until next time. Bye.